So continuing the discussion about alternatives to petrochemicals, this lesson is about cellulose as a condensation polymer. Now cellulose is actually the most common organic compound on earth because it's found in all green plants, in the cell wall and also in woody plants. So it's a very, very common polymer and I'll be discussing how cellulose is made through a reaction called condensation polymerization. Now, how this works is monomers come together and a small byproduct will be eliminated, as you can see from this diagram. Now, the small molecule is eliminated from the functional groups of the monomer, whether they're hydroxyl groups, alcohol groups, uh, different groups, and those functional groups I'll describe a little bit later. And the small molecule that will be eliminated is going to be water or methane, which is CH4. So, for N monomer units, there will be N minus 1 small molecules given off. So if we have a look at this structure here, if we had two monomer groups coming together, you would have 2 minus 1 equals 1 small molecule coming off. And in this instance, it's water. So if we look at this structure here, this blue, blue part you don't need to worry about. What we're looking at is functional groups. So you have a hydroxyl functional group here, you have another one here, but it's not doing anything in this case. And this hydroxyl group will bond with the hydrogen of the other hydroxyl group. And if you put it all together, you get water coming off and the two monomers will bind. And just so you know, in this part here, the blue part is showing, is hiding actually benzene. That would be a benzene group and that would be an ethane group. But for different monomers, that blue part could be all sorts of different things and it would have different uses and different properties. So it's head to tail joining and the chain lengthens progressively as it goes along. So monomer, monomer, monomer adds together to form a very long molecule. So for example, terephthalic acid, so for example, terephthalic acid would mean that this part here would be a benzene ring. Okay, terrible handwriting there. And 1,2-ethane diol, which is this compound here, meaning this blue, blue part would be an ethane group. When they come together, they produce PET, which I'm sure you've heard of. It's a common plastic for drink bottles and stuff like that. And the IUPAC name for PET is polyethene terephthalate and PET can be recycled. So that's an example of a condensation polymerization reaction. Now, PET, it's used in drink bottles, food packaging, such as when you get your meat, uh, audio and videotape, and clothing fibers. For example, dac Dacron and Terraline. If you've ever heard of Terry Toweling for uh, Australian hats and towels and stuff like that, that's a type of condensation polymer, Terraline. And with these polymers, there are synthetic condensation polymers and also natural condensation polymers. And I'll be talking about the natural condensation polymers today. So synthetic condensation polymers, some examples. Types of nylon include clothing, ropes and Kevlar, which is used for bulletproof vests. And it's a very long chain polymer. And Kevlar is very, very, very strong because it has strong hydrogen bonding. That's why they're used for bulletproof vests. And also another type is polyester. And different types of polyester are also used for clothing, also drink bottles, and for bed linen. But um, some people are allergic to these fibers. So you have to be careful. Now onto the natural condensation polymers. Uh, some examples, cellulose, which I'm talking about in this lesson. So I'll just go over a few others. Cotton, grown on little bushes there wool from animals and silk from silkworms. So there's some natural types of condensation polymers. So let's continue with cellulose. Now biopolymers. Biopolymers are naturally occurring polymers. So if you think about the prefix bio meaning living, so biopolymers naturally occurring. And we have a picture there of cotton and silk. They're made wholly or partly by natural processes. And examples are cellulose, 
starch, which are also made by plants and also a big part of our diet with um, things such as wheat and potatoes. Gluten, which some people can't have in their diet, gluten-free. Uh, DNA, and if you think about the structure of DNA, this is very simplistic, but basically DNA and proteins are just repeated units. That's why they're natural biopolymers. And protein, similarly, the same thing. So, cellulose, it's the most abundant biopolymer in nature. It's the main constituent in plant cell walls and the major structural component of woody plants. It's a complex carbohydrate, meaning it contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And again, carbohydrates are also part of our diet. They're fuel for our bodies. And it contains many alcohol functional groups. And the alcohol functional group is an OH. And I'll show you this structure in a moment. The monomers of cellulose are beta glucose molecules. Now glucose is a sugar, and again I'll show you the structure shortly. And cellulose is a polysaccharide, which means poly, meaning many, and saccharide meaning sugar. So glucose is a sugar, so many sugars is cellulose. And yes, so glucose is a monosaccharide, meaning one sugar. So glucose, one sugar, put lots of glucose structures together and you get many, which is cellulose. So looking at the structure of glucose, what we have here, you have two different forms of glucose, beta glucose and alpha glucose. And the only difference between these two structures is the position of the hydroxyl group. Now when we look at sugars, there's many different types of sugars in nature. So you have glucose, fructose, dextrose, all sorts of different sugars. The way that we name them and the way that they're different is whether these functional groups are in an up position or in a down position. So these, these two things may look very, very similar. It's just a hydroxyl group, whether it's up or down. But the fact is that the properties are very, very different according to whether where the functional groups are lying, okay? Now the formula for glucose, C6H12O6, that's quite important to remember. It's a carbon chain ring molecule. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, okay? So don't forget that there's a CH2OH group up here, okay? And the polymer of beta glucose, this one is cellulose, and the polymer of alpha glucose is starch, okay? And cellulose and starch are quite different molecules. So the bonding there and the positioning of the functional group is quite important. So let's look at how we polymerize glucose into cellulose. So it's a condensation polymerization. What happens is two glucose monomers join to start the process, okay, and we eliminate water by doing so. So this is showing us polymeriz polymerization to cellulose. So what we have here are four beta glucose molecules, okay, and the only difference is that this methyl group here and the hydroxy group here is up and here it's down, here it's up, here it's down. It's just because they're flipped and when they flip like that, they'll join together and lose water. So water comes off and that's condensation polymerization. So if you think of condensation on your car or on windows, water is coming off. So you will always lose some water. So if we put together four of these glucose molecules plus however many more we want, um, cellulose for example is about 10,000 units long, monomer units, so just put etc up there. If we put all these together, what happens is a water molecule will come off here and also here and so on and the water comes off and what happens is there'll be a bond to an oxygen as the water molecule comes off and you'll get polymerization here to cellulose. Okay, but always remember condensation polymerization, you're going to lose water. Okay, and that's where they'll link up together. Okay, so every linkage you'll lose one water and the chain will grow perpetually until about 10,000 units long. 
Okay, so finally looking at some properties of cellulose, just to recap, there are strong hydrogen bonding between cellulose strands, okay, because there's so many hydroxyl groups or alcohol groups and so many hydrogens, when cellulose um, molecules or strands come into contact, it's actually a very, very strong bonding there. And for that reason, cellulose is insoluble in water and it has good strength and rigidity. And this is mainly due to these strong hydrogen bonds, making it a very, very strong um, compound. And as I said before, it's the main component in plant cell walls. So that wraps up my talk about cellulose and condensation polymerization. And now we'll look at some questions. So question six, which of the following is a condensation polymer? So let's just have a think. Petroleum, well, petroleum is petroleum, so we can rule that one out straight away. Polyethylene is an addition polymer from petrochemicals, so that one's a no. PVC, if you'll remember, is also from petrochemicals and it's an addition polymer. So which one is a condensation polymer? Through process of el elimination and through what we learnt today, the answer is cellulose. Question seven. Of the following statements, which can best be applied to the formation of a condensation polymer? Okay, so let's look at our answers. Now, in condensation polymerization, a small molecule is produced with every linkage formed between the monomers. And if you remember, for cellulose, the small molecule is water. So our answer there is going to be, with the joining of two monomers, another small molecule is released. So our answer is B. Question A, which list contains only condensation polymers? Now, having a look at the list, why don't we think about cellulose, which we've just learnt about. It's a polysaccharide, which means many sugars of beta glucose. If you remember, the hydroxy group is up in the fifth position, if you remember back to the structure. So it's a polysaccharide of beta glucose monomers. Now starch is a polysaccharide of alpha glucose monomers. And nylon is a type of polyamide, but it's a naturally occurring polymer. So all of these contain functional groups where the linkage produces a small molecule byproduct. And for cellulose, as I said, that's going to be water. So in that case, our answer will be cellulose, starch and nylon are all condensation poly polymers. And if you have a quick look at the others, PVC, for example, made from petrochemicals, it's not. Cotton, proteins, uh, glucose, no, glucose is a sugar, not a polymer. And looking at this one, rayon is an addition polymer again. So our answer for this one is A. Question nine. Cellulose is a condensation polymer found in biomass. Outline the importance of this compound. So now we have to list a few uh, important things about cellulose. Okay, cellulose makes up cell walls of plants and is the most abundant carbohydrate on earth. It is the main component of biomass. It's a polymer of glucose, which is a sugar. So it is a polymer of glucose monomers all put together. Cellulose contains the basic carbon chain structure to produce starting materials for petrochemicals. And unlike petroleum, cellulose is a renewable resource. So thus, it's a potentially important alternative raw material for the production of synthetic polymers. Now finally, question 10. The following structure can be used as a monomer for condensation polymerization reactions. Part A. Provide the products from the reaction of three molecules of the above compound. So if we draw three of these molecules and we put them together and rip off water, what we get is this structure here. So what we've done is we've taken off OH from that end, we've taken off H from that end, flipped it over and stuck it together to get this, and thus, because there's three molecules, you get if you remember, n minus one byproducts, so three minus one, two, you're left with two waters. So that's how you do that reaction. So redraw what you get in the question, flip it around, take off the water, and you can draw what your product will be. 
And finally, part B, same question. The molar mass of the molecule is 138, so for this molecule. What would be the molar mass of the polymer made of five monomer units? Okay, so five monomer units will be 138, this molecule, times five. But remember, we'll get rid of four waters, n minus one. So the weight of four waters will be four times 18. So the molecular mass of a five unit chain will be 138 times five minus 18 times four. And our answer there is 618. So that concludes my discussion about condensation, polymerization. And in the next tutorial, I'll be discussing alcohols and naming organic compounds.